Welcome to worship on the 18th Sunday after Pentecost. A couple of announcements uh, as we begin today. Uh, first, next, this upcoming Saturday on October 2nd at 1 p.m., we will be having a pet blessing in the parking lot of the church. All pets are invited. There might be an appearance from a farm animal or two as well, but we ask that you keep your pets leashed or in a proper um, carrying container. Um, today, I'll be going to Marlu Ridge. They have an annual fundraiser called the Walkathon, and I'm very excited to go to that event and uh, show our support from Trinity uh, for this wonderful ministry close by to us. On October 10th, uh, we will be having the Crop Walk at 2 p.m., and that is at Taylor Park in Keatesville, and you are certainly welcome and invited to come and support that wonderful event. Then, on October 16th, uh, we will be participating in Boone Fest, and I believe we might have uh, another little book sale out, sun, out front right on Main Street. The day after, on October 17th at 6 p.m., uh, there will be an opportunity for youth to go to Jen Poffenberger's house and sit around and eat some pizza and talk about our faith. Uh, you're invited to bring a blanket to stay warm in a chair. And then on October 20th, um, we'll have an event called Spirituality of Aging, and that will be led by Roy Oswald. Uh, it'll involve some meditation and some stretching and prayer. Uh, that'll start on October 20th, and then we'll have some more opportunities, um, I believe on the first and third uh, of every month. Um, third, first and third week of every month. So um, look for more information for that in the days to come. and. Um, we're online today, and so we hope you are feeling well, and uh, if you are not, we encourage you to um, get checked out or get tested if you're not, and um, we just pray and hope that all is well with you these days. Let us begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose teaching is life, whose presence is sure, and whose love is endless. Amen. Let us confess our sins to the one who welcomes us with an open heart. God, our comforter, like a lost sheep, we have gone astray. We gaze upon abundance and see scarcity. We turn our faces away from injustice and oppression. We exploit the earth with our apathy and greed. Free us from our sin, gracious God. Listen when we call out to you for help. Lead us by your love to love our neighbors as ourselves. Amen. People of God, we have all sinned, and we all fall short of the glory of God. By the gift of grace in Jesus Christ, God makes you righteous. Now receive with glad hearts the forgiveness of all your sins. Amen. Our first hymn is um, hymn 636, How Small Our Span of Life, and we will sing the first and last hymn together. How small our span of life, O oh God, our years from birth till death. A single beat within the heart, the catching of a breath. A drop within the ocean's deep, a grain upon the shore. A flash of light before we sleep, to see the sun no more. We thank you, God, for kindling faith that lights our transient years, illumining our pilgrimage through midst of doubt and tears. For hope that sees a life beyond the swiftly passing days. For love both human and divine that lifts our hearts to praise. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ 
the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all, and we say, and also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. And we will now say the words of the Canticle of Praise together. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to God's people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Generous God, your Son gave his life that we might come to peace with you. Give us a share of your Spirit, and in all that we do, empower us to bear the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first lesson is taken from Numbers chapter 11, verses 4 through 6, 10 through 17, and 24 through 25. The introduction. What constitutes legitimate need and legitimate leadership is the focus of this reading. God provides manna in the wilderness, yet the people crave meat. What is truly needful? God bestows the spirit on 70 elders, yet two men not designated as leaders prophesy in the power of God's spirit. What constitutes real leadership? The reading. The rabble among them had a strong craving, and the Israelites also wept again and said, if only we had meat to eat. We remember the fish we used to eat in Egypt for nothing, the cucumbers, the melons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic. But now our strength is dried up, and there is nothing at all but this manna to look at. Moses heard the people weeping throughout their families, all at the entrances of their tents. Then the Lord became very angry, and Moses was displeased. So Moses said to the Lord, Why have you treated your servant so badly? Why have I not found favor in your sight, that you lay the burden of all this people on me? Did I conceive all this people? Did I give birth to them that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a sucking child to the land that you promised on oath to their ancestors? Where am I to get meat to give to all this people? For they come weeping to me and say, give us meat to eat. I am not able to carry all this people alone for they are too heavy for me. If this is the way you are going to treat me, put me to death at once. If I have found favor in your sight, and do not let me see my misery. So the Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy of the elders of Israel, 
whom you know to be the elders of the people and officers over them. Bring them to the tent of meeting and have them take their place there with you. I will come down and talk with you there and I will talk, take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. And they shall bear the witness, they shall bear the burden of the people along with you so that you will not bear it all by yourself. So Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord. And he gathered 70 elders of the people and placed them all around the tent. Then the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke to him and took some of the spirit that was on him and put it on the 70 elders. And when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not stop. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second lesson is taken from James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. The introduction. Marks of the Christian community include praying for those who are sick and in need, celebrating with those in good health, restoring those who have strayed, confessing sins to one another, and offering forgiveness to each other. The reading. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another, so that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and the heaven gave rain, and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if anyone among you wanders from the truth and is brought back by another, you should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Lord, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Before we hear the gospel, I just want to give a brief reflection on those readings from Hutch. You know, the first one came from Numbers, and we hear that the Israelites want to go back to Egypt, but they kind of forget what it was like to be in Egypt, I think. And I think in our own context today, we sometimes yearn to go back to what life was like before COVID. But we're in the wilderness right now, and all we can do is move forward, I think. And when Moses is struggling to help all these people in his care, God tells him that he's not alone. And he brings the elders of the church to make sure that those who are in need are taken care of. And I think that's reflected in the reading from James that Hutch read from. Are any among you suffering? Are any among you sick? We should pray and call for the elders to care for those who are sick. So if you're feeling alone, know that there are those who care for you. If you want to go back, let us move forward together through this time that we are in the wilderness. Let us hear this reading from Mark's Gospel, the ninth chapter. Glory, the Holy Gospel according to Mark, the ninth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. John said to Jesus, Teacher, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we tried to stop him because he was not following us. John, but Jesus said, Do not stop him, for one who does a deed of power in my name will be able to soon after, will not, in my name will be able to soon afterward speak evil of me. Whoever is not against us is for us. For truly I tell you, whoever gives you a cup of water to drink 
because you bear the name of Christ, will by no means lose the reward. If any of you put a stumbling block before one of these little ones who believe in me, it would be better for you if a great millstone were hung around your neck and you were thrown into the sea. If your hand causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life maimed than to have two hands and go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. And if your foot causes you to stumble, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life lame than to have two feet and to be thrown into hell. And if your eye causes you to stumble, it is better tear it out, for it is better for you to enter the kingdom of God with one eye than to have two eyes and to be thrown into hell. Where their worm never dies, the fire is never quenched, for everyone will be salted with fire. Salt is good, but if salt loses its saltiness, how can you season it? Have salt in yourselves and be at peace with one another. This is the gospel of the Lord, and we say, praise to you, O Christ. Today's gospel, I think, is one that makes us wonder if we should indeed put a question mark at the end of the response upon hearing the gospel. It's pretty dark, isn't it? Perhaps it should be more like, praise to you, O Christ. We read it, and then we read it again, and we wonder to ourselves, Jesus, that seems a bit harsh, don't you think? What on earth are you trying to say here? What are you trying to tell us? Well, if we take a closer look and we can, re we can get to the roots of what our good Lord is telling us. We hear this story of the disciples trying to stop a man who has been casting out demons in Jesus' name. They almost, the disciples almost seem to be acting like little tattletales who go to Jesus and they're especially upset because the offender was not among one of them. In the eyes of the disciples, he was not a part of their inner circle, and he was acting differently from what they considered to be the norm. So as soon as Jesus heard about it, he turned things around on his closest followers. Jesus rebuked their narrow, unbending exclusiveness. And he told them, do not stop that man, because no one who does powerful acts, no one who does a good deed in my name, can quickly turn around and curse me. Then Jesus concluded with this powerful statement, contrary to what we're used to hearing. He said, whoever is not against us is for us. Whoever is not against us is for us. Jesus makes it abundantly clear that he and his disciples are not a clique, working in a little corner of life, fenced off and away from others, because Jesus knows that God's actions are not limited to just his closest disciples. Anyone anyone doing good in the name of Jesus should not be stopped from doing so. What Jesus taught his disciples is equally a lesson for us, isn't it? We may associate ourselves with this Lutheran church, but we cannot fence ourselves off from others who have different ways of following Jesus or of finding God. As Jesus says, the one who is not against us is for us. The one who is not against Jesus is on the side of Christ. So Jesus gives us a model for a wider view. His message to the disciples helps us to stop for just a moment when we fall into the trap of thinking in terms of us and them. Jesus invites us and encourages us to see life beyond the perspective of our own insular groups 
whether they be political, our geographical communities that we live in, or even our religious affiliation. In today's gospel lesson, Jesus rejects intolerance of the other or those considered to be outsiders. Maybe Jesus realizes that the disciples consider this man casting out demons as a threat to their inner circle, to their inner status. The disciples may have seen this man as an outsider, and so they tried to stop him. But Jesus' words remind us that Christianity is not reserved for just a privileged few. Jesus reminds us that no one seeking to do the Lord's work is an outsider. He reminds us to welcome all people who are willing to join the journey and follow Christ. Over and over again, Jesus' words remind us to be welcoming and hospitable. Over and over again, Jesus' words rebuke us when we turn against others because they are different. Over and over again, the life of Jesus and the way that he taught his first disciples reminds us that miracles can occur beyond what we can imagine, that people besides us can do the incredible work of God. Of course, there is another side to this, isn't there? Because sometimes, sometimes it does make sense to separate ourselves from others. But I think the main message here is that if and when we do separate ourselves, we should not make this decision to do so lightly. If we are going to draw a line in the sand, it is better to be a last resort. Jesus helps us work against the temptation to think that for me to be right, anyone who disagrees with me must be wrong. Or, as we more commonly have heard, if you're not for me, you're against me. Jesus seems to be telling the disciples something like this. Look, look for the commonality rather than the differences. Recognize that there are many among you who might consider, who might work or think differently. But don't be so quick to jump to the conclusion that they are against you or against me. Jesus warns us against using simple solutions to complex problems. He causes us to see that the truth is always bigger than any one person or any one groups of people's grasp of it. Jesus cautions us against inflexibility of thought and deed. Instead, he helps us to embrace tolerance of a variety of actions and viewpoints. He helps us relearn what is so easy to forget, that a diversity in the body of Christ is absolutely essential for the body of Christ. Today's gospel reinforces a belief that we need to be a church that is less focused on either or and both and instead. So where do we find this commonality? Well, maybe we should begin by looking at our earliest roots. In the earliest days of Christianity, when Jews and Gentiles formed this faith and religion we call Christianity. It was a diverse group of people at that time, and together they made up the body of Christ and formed this church that we call Christianity today. You know, those who can declare that Jesus is Lord is not against us, and therefore for us and for Christ. Those who can follow in the steps of Jesus, taking up their crosses and denying themselves for the sake of God and for God's children are not against us, and therefore 
They are for us and for Christ. The story of today's gospel is about the disciples' attempt to draw a circle around Jesus and themselves, shutting out others, shutting out the one who was casting out demons in Jesus' name. But I hope, I hope that we can go forth remembering that we have a God who would rather build bridges, who would rather open up the circle that allow us to find our commonalities rather than focus on our differences. I hope that we can remember that Jesus breaks down the barriers that divide and separate us. So people of God, I invite us this day to go forth rejoicing in this good news and to follow in the footsteps of Jesus. Let us give thanks. Amen. Our next hymn is hymn number 719, Where Cross Your Crowded Ways of Life. Where cross the crowded ways of life, where sound the cries of race and clan, above the noise of self, this strife we hear your voice, O Son of Man. Where human hearts shall learn your love and follow where your feet have trod till glorious from your heaven above shall come the city of our God. Since we are online today, we can give, we can share the peace of God in many different and diverse ways. You can stop by someone's house, knock on their door. You can send them a text or give them a call or comment on this Facebook live stream. But at this time, I hope that the peace of Christ may be with you, and we say, and also with you. Please take a moment now or after the service is over to share that peace with one another. And now at this time, we say the words of the Apostles' Creed, the statement of faith that grounds us the statement of faith that keeps us moving. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, he is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. This time we'll have the words, uh, the prayers of intercession. At the end of each petition, you can respond even at home with hear our prayer. Made children and heirs of God's promise, we pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. We pray for the church and its ministry. Bless newly baptized and encourage them in their journeys of faith. Sustain all members of the body of Christ in lives of prayer, service, and worship. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the natural wonders of your creation Bless local waterways, forests, and natural areas. Restore damaged forests, waterways, and habitats, and lead us to be good stewards of what you have provided. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
We pray for those in authority. Give them wise minds and compassionate hearts. Strengthen in them a desire to protect the vulnerable and care for those that are underserved. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are struggling with cancer, dementia, or any other disease. Provide peace and resilience to those who are sick, grieving, or suffering in any way, especially Daniel, Sue and Vic, Anna, Patty, Catherine, Susie, Riot, and the family of Christy. Sustain caregivers with energy and patience. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the worship leaders of this congregation, for musicians, readers, and those who run our technology, and all who work in the background. Bless us through their ministry, that we may worship still this day, and grant them the passion to continue in their service. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all your saints, O God, those we have loved and known, and those from every time and place. Continue to guide us by their example and reassure us of your promised salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive these prayers, O God, and those in our hearts known only to you, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. It is at this time we give thanks for the many gifts that are offered up to our church, whether they are music or someone reading in a service or those who keep the sound and tech and video going. We give thanks for those who give financial gifts as well. If you would like to give online, there are ways you can look on our, webs our website and drop off or send something in the mail as well. Let us pray, giving thanks for these gifts. God, we give you thanks for all those who offer up themselves, who offer their time, their gifts and talents and their possessions. May they be signs of your gracious love and may they be fruits of our vocation and our service in the world. Amen. Now, let us pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. We are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our sending hymn today is hymn number 410. All glory be to God on high. But before that, we're going to receive a blessing. May God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine upon you with grace and mercy. And may God look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. And so much thanks to those who are running the sound and tech. Even when the pastor messes up, they can jump back and forth. Let us sing together. Through sickness, need, and bitter death, 
grant us your warm, life-giving breath. Our lives are in your keeping. Now go in peace, people of God, sharing the good news and widening our circles for others. Thanks be to God.